Good evening. My name is Dave Crockett. I'm the incoming chair of the uh, Grand Bend uh, and Area Community Health Center. And I'm privileged to be able to welcome you all here and have this celebration of Dr. Liam O'Connor and his amazing career. There are several guests here today to speak, uh, including the Mayor of Lambton Shores, Bill Weber, Mayor of South Huron, Maureen Cole, members of our staff, Executive Director Kay Melito, uh, Dr. Peter Englert, our Director of Primary Care, Heather Klopp, and a, with the patient. And, um, but first, before we get into those presentations, uh, many of you may not be aware of uh, Dr. O'Connor's history. So, Dr. O'Connor arrived in Grand Bend 47 years ago, July 1971. And the rest is history. And he's had an incredible journey and he's been a wonderful benefit to our community. So we thank him generously. Now I was a little bit nervous when I, of course, realized that Dr. O'Connor is Irish. And I was afraid, oh my God, how many words are there gonna be that are Irish that I have to figure out how to pronounce correctly? So I was lucky, I, I went on a YouTube video and discovered all the key words for the phonetic explanation of the Irish language. And I, it started out pretty good. They said, once you figure it out, it's easy because it's consistent, unlike the English language. And then it started with the ideas. And then I thought, oh my God, if there's an Irish word with two vowels in it, I'm in trouble because there's about 16 different explanations. So luckily, Dr. O'Connor, your name is easy to pronounce. And I love the poetry of Liam. Liam William O'Connor was born in County Louth. In Irish and Gaelic, that's Cunde Lu. He received his medical education and internship at University College and St. Lawrence's Hospital in Dublin, Ireland. He came to Canada at the age of 25 to practice at the Grand Bend Area Medical Center with Dr. Sean Trapp. In a newspaper article dated Friday, July 16, 1971, the caption of the photo of the two young doctor states, the doctors, all, uh, the doctors all Grand Bend has been waiting to welcome have arrived safe and sound. After several hours of delay in Montreal due to an airline service interruption, which never happens today, the doctors arrive tired but obviously pleased with the new medical center awaiting them here. That was the brand spanking new clinic on Gill Road in Grand Bend. Throughout the years, Dr. O'Connor maintained an active rural family and general practice in Grand Bend, and Hensel is a senior partner in the health services organization. With Dr. O'Connor as a medical advisor to the Community Steering Committee from 1998 to 2001, the vision of this new medical center began to form. The Grand Bend Medical Center evolved into the Grand Bend Area Community Health Center in 1999. His special interest was in the field of dermatology and he obtained a diploma in practical dermatology through part-time distance education from the University of Wales Hospital in Cardiff. He's had a very busy, busy life. I looked at 47 years and tried to put it into hours in a day and I got up to knowing he's a physician who graduated before 1980 and the number of days he probably works on hours. It's probably 150,000 hours over that 47 years. And here's some of the work he did. He maintained staff privileges at the South Huron Hospital Association in Exeter, which included working in the emergency department and inpatient unit, including delivering babies. You saw a beautiful picture on the slideshow there. He served as chief of staff on two separate occasions, um, once in 1974-75 and then again in 1978 to 1981. He served on the property and finance committee from 93 to 96, an audit and tissue committee from 96 to 2006. I worked in hospital for many years, so I know the amount of work this is for someone to volunteer their time as the medical expertise on these committees. He, he regularly attended the monthly medical advisory committee meetings uh, at the South Huron Hospital Association. Throughout those years, as well as sailing and raising two active sons in Grand Bend, which included coaching soccer, and I'm sorry about the World Cup, you're not there, but you know, next time, next time. Attending countless hockey practices and games, he found time to contribute as the advisory physician and board director to the palliative care volunteer program, initiated uh, such a program in southwestern Ontario from 1994 to 1997. 
And we all know what an important service that is then and, and today. From 1998 to 2002, he was the resource physician for pain and symptom management for outreach and the home care program in southwestern Ontario. And again, we understand pain management control today is another huge issue in terms of doing it well. Dr. O'Connor has been the medical director at the Blue Water Rest Home in Zurich since 2002 and also regularly visits his patients at the Queensway Nursing Home in Hensel. From 1972 until the not too distant past, he was the area coroner for southwestern Ontario. That's where I started to get the 150,000 hours and that's uh, a, a tremendous amount of commitment and time. I'd now like to uh, introduce Heather Clapp to share some experiences with Dr. O'Connor. Heather? Good evening and thank you for coming. The uh, community and the patients of the Grand Bend and South Huron Hospital areas had been enjoying the services of Dr. O'Connor for over a decade before I even got to meet him. Uh, starting in 1981, I was working as a medical receptionist with Dr. Charles Wallace, who's here today in Zurich, and Dr. Peter Englert, also in Zurich. Uh, Dr. O'Connor was also working with Dr. Wallace and nurse practitioner Maggie Vischer and Dr. Englert in Hensel. And some of you will remember the clinic operating out of the old house just west of the tracks in Hensel. As in Grand Bend, he had built up and was starting and was had built up quite a loyal and loving practice of families. So I was asked by Dr. Wallace to go to help Dr. O'Connor for one day uh, as there was a staff shortage that day. Well it just didn't last one day, here we still are. Uh, the team of Carol Cressman and Joanne Moyer um, oriented me to the ways of Dr. O'Connor at that time. <laughs> and Wendy did too. <laughs> As any medical office assistant knows, every doctor has their, their own little ways, and Dr. O'Connor, of course, was no exception. Over the years, we, ex we have ex seen patients experience with him in their medical care. These patients trust him, respect him, seek his advice, and actually, they love him. He's more than a doctor to many, but he is often a confidant. This has been expressed to us as staff here at the Medical Center this past couple months since Dr. O'Connor has announced his retirement and patients have expressed it to us and I'm sure they've expressed it to him too. They often say that they feel like they will be losing a part of their family. We have uh, one such patient here today that's been a patient for a long time and I'd like to ask Martin Dykstra to come up and tell a little story. I've been a patient uh, with Dr. O'Connor for quite a long time, since my teenage years. And uh, I, have, I know there's thousands of stories in this room, but I think I have one that's very unique. I live in Exeter, and I had a transport company for 30 years in a warehouse. And one day I came out of the warehouse and I sat down in my office, and I got a severe pain in my arm. And it also started to quiver about every two minutes, it would go, and stop, do it again. Now this is, this is weird. And so I went to the hospital that night and they gave me some pain medication and the next day it was even more severe. And, and so then the following day, I came to the medical building here and I was met by a nurse practitioner. And um, she looked at me and looked at the symptoms and she had this mysterious frown on her face and she said, you need to see Dr. O'Connor. So Dr. O'Connor came in and he saw me and saw the symptoms and um, I think check my vitals, make sure I wasn't in any uh, immediate danger. And it was sort of strange, he said, I need you to go home, try to get some rest, and come back tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Okay. So the next day I came back and I'm sitting in the patient's room and they'll hear this little rap on the door and always cordial, always friendly and upbeat and Dr. O'Connor comes in, how are you today, Martin? And here's a 50 year old man, this is about 12 years ago, and I'm in excruciating pain with tears welling up in my eyes and not so good here. And Dr. Connor sits down in his chair and he says, well, you've been bit by the hobo spider. Heard me? You've been bit by a hobo spider. And you can look that up on the internet today. There's three or four pages 
um, on that. At the time, there was only one page, and um, I remember the three paragraphs on that page. There was a paragraph that if it was a, a venom wet bite, it was fatal. If you got a dry bite, it blocked oxygen going to your muscles, and your muscles were screaming for oxygen, and they would cramp and tighten up. And uh, it was just like having a chamois, and you're wringing it right out. And um, he said it will last for 45 days. And the 46th day, you will be clear of your symptoms. OK. So then he said, but there's one thing that doesn't quite jive. This spider is native to the northwest coast of the United States, northern California, Idaho, Washington, Oregon. And I said to him, well, the last two weeks, I just received 40 loads of seed in from Boise, Idaho. And I guess one of these little critters just came rolling along and got up into my sleeve, and there I was. And I would say that at that time, the staff and myself were amazed at the brilliancy of the diagnosis. And um, I would say that I've always been very confident and very appreciative of your work, and um, I wish you, and I'm sure all, all the folks here wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. I often thought sometimes people just wanted Dr. O'Connor to lay, their hand, lay his hand on them and then they, they would be cured. Uh, another patient that we have, a longtime patient that would like to say a few words is Dan Bialis. And we can also, also thank Dan because he is supplying the video for today from ETM. Well, well, <laughs> doctor, the time has come. I, uh, I, for one, I don't know, I hope this does not sound like eulogy. <laughs> but you know something, you really struck a nerve with a whole lot of people in the community. His Worship Weber, I know this community is very grateful for having you here all these years. A man that comes from Ireland and, and, and puts up a practice such as you have done is just phenomenal. I've got to tell a little, little story, just a little beautiful story, though. Uh, as a patient, I, you know, you can't, you can't help it. You notice things. I came in to uh, see him one day, and he's got these two gorgeous, gorgeous ladies around him, a blondie and a brunette. I thought to myself, whoa, this is something new. The brunette is still with us to today. <laughs> Mrs. O'Connor, that was great. That was great. She won the contest. I won, she won your heart. But anyway, uh, something else I found out about her. She is an angel. This girl plays harp like you have never heard it before. I, uh, we have her uh, on our archives. In Zurich, you played at the retirement home. It was phenomenal, phenomenal. But it's not your evening, it's your husband's. <laughs> so I'm going to say this. From what I know personally, you have been a very professional man in a community. That it's, it's going to be very hard to match you surpass you? I don't think so. But I mean, I was hoping for some of these pioneers that would take a notice and learn that skill that a doctor can have. Peter, Dr. Englert, you're not, you're, you're really walking close. You guys are buddies, I know that. But, but, but this is good, this is good. When a community has people like you, uh, community is different enriched by your care that you have shown, that deep, intimate care that I don't even know how to put into words. But you have cared for my family, and I owe you a whole lot for that. My father, my mother, she's here. Dad went to his maker. I guess we all have to go someday. But you're too young to retire. I don't know. I don't know. My kids are wanting me to uh, look that way too, but uh, here I am. I don't, not just yet. <laughs> 
But anyway, from the heart, I didn't prepare anything major to say, but I just want to say, wish you all the best. You deserve a healthy and long retirement. A doctor, he reminded me of those doctors that are without borders. He would lend a helping hand and a care to just about anybody and everybody. And that care has been very intimate and deep. Some of you can vouch for that. I know I can. And I want to thank you from my heart for the best care I've had. I'm going to try and look him up. I have to know. <laughs> thank you, Peter. OK, thank you, doctor. And best of everything to you. Thank you. And finally, we have a telegram from Ireland. Liam and myself worked together at the Grand Bend Medical Center starting July 1971. I drifted away and about a year after about a year, and Liam continued to work there. Grand Bend has gotten more developed since then and has expanded. Anyway, I want to wish him all the best on his retirement and this should give him more time for travel and for sailing, etc. I am sorry I will not be there for the gathering as I will only be over there at the end of the month. I will get in touch with Dr. O'Connor later. Dr. Sean Trapp. Dr. Engler, you're next. Hard act to follow. I just thought I'd share a little bit about my first encounters with Dr. O'Connor professionally. Um, when I was just finished second year university, I was studying microbiology and immunology at Western. And I was up for the summer and I was driving my motorcycle, uh, just coming off the main drag heading this way and some unfortunate individual uh, lost the transmission in their car, put oil all over the road. I hit the brakes to turn to go down towards uh, the post office and ended up wiping out on my motorcycle. So I got up off the ground and uh, drove over to the medical center. I thought that would be a good place to go. <laughs> and it was sort of new back then, too. So I walked in, and uh, Dr. O'Connor wasn't there. He was actually out, I think, doing rounds at the hospital at the time. It was around noon. Um, but uh, uh, Dr. Clay, the dentist, was there. So, <laughs> And back in those days, the, the back end connected. It really wasn't a separate office. So he took me around and patched me up as best a dentist can do <laughs> and told me to come back to see Dr. O'Connor. So I came back a couple hours later and did see Dr. O'Connor. And he had a look at me and cleaned me up and sprayed antibiotic spray on my wounds and uh, put some dressings on. And after that, he sort of mentioned to me that uh, he thought I was a little strange since I was talking about the germs that might be growing in my wounds at the time, but of course that's what I was studying. And I didn't really have much contact with him until oh, a few years later when I was in medical school. And uh, his, um, his house is actually just behind my father's house on the lake in Southcott. So I was down on the beach and he sort of heard that I was in medical school, so he came over and said, you know, we could really use some doctors around here. Have you thought about setting up practice here when you graduate? Well, I guess you all know what happened. I did graduate and uh, came and set up practice here with Dr. O'Connor. I also, I also did a locum with him, too, um, when I was a medical student. And some of the staff occasionally will find the old notes that I wrote, and they really can't believe that I wrote them because my writing was legible at the time. <laughs> But anyway, so I came and set up practice here, and it was with Dr. O'Connor and Dr. Wallace, who's uh, here with us tonight, too, and uh, practiced for, I guess it's 30, ooh, 30, 38, 39 years with Dr. O'Connor, where he's been my uh, um, business partner, my friend, colleague, and uh, mentor, and... Uh, as I say, it's been a, an amazing 39 years. I'm really going to miss him when he's gone. He was always there as long as I've been here for that many years. But uh, I guess times change. But I would, I guess, like to thank Liam very much for all the years of uh, advice, support, and friendship and uh, through all of our trials and tribulations. 
and uh, through the health service organization into this beautiful community health center and uh, now to your retirement. So thank you. Well spoken, Dr. Engler. I think there's some messages there. Um, number one, you can't retire. You have 10 more years to go. And we should do something about giving motorcycles to the medical students at Western and <laughs> Queen's University. I think there's an idea there we have to build on. Um, as you've heard from the tes earlier testimonials, Dr. O'Connor has been very dedicated to his family practice patients. Um, also, though, when he had his time off, you could find him in some far off point of the globe. You've seen some photos here, perhaps conducting a vaccine clinic with the assistance of his wife, Wendy, on the Amazon River, or simply enjoying the beauty and splendor of such places as the Antarctic and the Taj Mahal, or even the Grand Bend Beach, I suppose. Um, it's my pleasure now to uh, invite up uh, Her Worship uh, Maureen Cole, Mayor of South Huron, to say a few words. Thank you. Um, today when I came in um, and I came over to Dr. O'Connor, he said, oh, Maureen, you're going to say a few words? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm, today I'm, I'm happy to be here as a mayor, but I'm also very happy to be one of the old um, people that were actually um, taught many things by Dr. O'Connor. So one of the first things that he would have taught me was the toe tag, right, in, in Emerged, how to put the toe tag on. There's a certain way that that goes on, and uh, we all learned, and that was the way that it was. But uh, we did have standards, and he was one of those that had the standards, so you never had to worry about what his judgment would be that what he said would be true, just as we've heard today that it's there. He also was the person that treated all of us with respect, and I will never forget those things, as my colleagues remember him, as the Irish doctor who would come and go from um, in Emerge, he would be, in his, as a coroner, he would be back several times um, to see his patients, and um, they all were happy that he was the one that came to see them. So. Um, Enough about the doctor, it's about the person that we know today, that um, we are so happy that he is able now to go and do the things that he has done. He has given us so much in our community and to the hospital um, that it's time now for him to actually enjoy himself. So thank you so much for all that you've done for us as a community, as healthcare professionals, and uh, enjoy. Thank you for that personal perspective. And now I'd like to call upon His Worship, uh, Bill Weber, please. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to be here, honored to be here on behalf of the uh, municipality of Lampton, Hor Lampton Shores. It is uh, great to have uh, the commitment and the caring of Dr. O'Connor has had in this community for 47 years, I believe it was said. Our daughter's 40 years old, and I, my wife tells me stories of, uh, oh, just go home and wait a little longer And with, with uh, when our daughter was born with Dr. O'Connor. So everyone has a story, and everyone is, is special, and I, I believe that that's... Uh, that's what we have in the community, and that's what has been brought to our community by Dr. O'Connor and our community health center that is here. The commitment of all the professionals uh, makes this a great community. Uh, when, I, when I talked to Dr. O'Connor on the way in, it was, uh, you've led such a great life here. You have helped us build a community here that means so much to everyone. Uh, we need you to go and talk to the young doctors that are graduating and say, come and live in a small community. It becomes a family. Uh, and and uh, I would uh, encourage you uh, to be available for uh, graduating doctors to talk to them about the life that can be in a small town and how you become a part of that and, and how it gives back. I, I, I do hope that you feel that, that the community has given back for all that you have given to it. and. 
uh, as we go forward, you know that you have left a, a great mark on the community. Uh, and on behalf of the Council of Lambton Shores and the community of Lambton Shores, and uh, as my other hat is as the, through the County of Lambton, we say thank you uh, for what you have done for the community and all the best in the future. Thank you for that community perspective, Bill. And uh, perhaps in this year's budget, two or three motorcycles will be appropriate to help us with our recruitment. Yeah. <laughs> I'd now like to uh, introduce uh, Trish Wilcox. She's worked with Dr. O'Connor as medical office assistant, and she's going to make a presentation on behalf of the health center staff. Trish. Wow, I knew there'd be a lot of people here. <laughs> I don't do well in crowds, but uh, I was honored to be asked to uh, come up here and speak. Um, I've been working here for about 12 years, and I think I've been working with Dr. O'Connor for, I want to say at least 11. 11. <laughs> um, yeah, I've learned a lot, and you will be missed by everyone here, including myself every day. It's, I've learned a lot, and you had mentioned about wondering if you're going to be able to understand some of the words. Some of his writing I've had to ask if it was in Irish too, but uh, I did work through that every <laughs> day and it was, yeah, so it's been fun working with you. And this is... Thanks very much, Trish. And I'd like to call upon uh, Kate Melito, our executive director, to make a presentation on behalf of the Health Center, recognizing uh, Dr. O'Connor's vision. Kate. Dr. O'Connor, when I first met you, I think one of the things you told me right in the beginning was that uh, I needed to appreciate that there were leaders in this community that had helped this community health center get established and that you were one of them. And you presented it in a humble and informative way. And you know what's, for me with my tradition in the health center world, it does take a whole community that identifies a need in order to create a health center and through the leadership of uh, Dr. O'Connor and a whole steering committee, and I know Ted, um, Don Tedford is here as well, who was part of that steering committee, and you had a vision. You knew this community was underserviced, and you felt you were concerned. There were two physicians here at the time, and you wondered, you saw the fragmentation of services in this area, and you, you had a vision, and Don had a vision. And a group of people came together and you helped to establish this community health center. You felt concerned that there was um, limited opportunities for expansion. And as a result of helping this health center get created in this location, I came to this health center four years ago. There were 50 staff here, five physicians, three nurse practitioners, and over 40 varying non-professionals and professionals that are here to serve this community. And had it not been for the vision of this community, of Dr. O'Connor, Don Tedford, others in the community, this center would not exist. Through the work of that steering committee, you managed to get a commitment from the provincial government for this very site, for this very facility. And truly, it's remarkable. I know many of you would not be surprised to know that the Erie St. Clair Lynn Board, when they came to visit and hold one of their meetings here, they commented on how impressed they were with this facility. And many people throughout southwestern Ontario identify the Grand Bend Community Health Centre as an example of some of the best care that a community can have. And that's because there were visionaries. So Dr. O'Connor, from one very small visionary to another, you, you had the big vision, Don had the big vision, others did. You helped this to happen. And to, the, to, to you, this community can be indebted forever. Um, it's truly remarkable. And on behalf of the Health Centre, we'd like to present you with a symbol of your visionary um, skill and ability.
Well said, Kate. Well, we're nearing the one minute to the end of the period, and uh, you're going to have your final say, Dr. O'Connor. Um, first of all, uh, Dr. Uh, Liam O'Connor is not one to brag about what he's done, but he certainly has had great accomplishments. You've heard a lot of those stories here tonight. Wonderful. And they're all from very humble beginnings, from his home in Ireland to the villages of Grand Bend and Hensel and the town of Exeter he has and will continue to reach out to the world. He has always willingly accepted the opportunities to share his knowledge and to help right here at home, working with students, residents, nurse practitioners, nurses, allied health professionals, medical office assistants, and patients. You can feel the respect and the love. We all felt that tonight. So on behalf of the board, and Ann Sutton's here joining me from the board, we'd like to extend this appreciation for your service to our community and that you enjoy this next stage of the journey of your life experience. So I'll talk to you afterwards and give you some uh, lessons in Gaelic. All right? <laughs> um, anyway, thank you all for coming. And, um, it's been, uh, I'd like to thank the, the community, uh, the board from the CHC, Kate, and uh, the administration of the CHC for acknowledging my uh, uh, lengthy uh, time practice in Grand Bend as medical practitioner. Um, uh, I'm 70, uh, uh, it's 50 years since, I've been st since I started practice and 47 of those in Grand Bend. And you can imagine over the last uh, two months, three months that I've been, uh, it's with kind of a heavy heart and mixed emotions that I've been saying goodbye to some of my patients, particularly the long-term patients. But um, I've realized the part that, that they have played in my life and the impact that they've had in my life as well. And it, was, it, it is large, it's tremendous. I've had, uh, four generations, many four generations of, of families, and a number of five generations of families. Now, every one of those gave me great joy. Someone that came to the office and someone that left. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, it, is, uh, it, it was a privilege to be the family doctor, and I really thank them for uh, their support and their uh, loyalty and their friendship over the years. Now, um, we Irish tend to rely on a lot of luck, <laughs> and uh, certainly luck shone upon me when I made a few decisions in, when I came here. One was uh, um, my relationship, meeting Peter Englert and Debbie Waters, my two long-term colleagues and friends. When I met Peter, Peter just described his first uh, thing to me, and what he was, the bug he was talking about was the new bug on the block. It was called Pseudomonas. And I had never heard of Pseudomonas. He had just graduated from microbiology. And uh, he was telling me about all these green streaks, streaks you find under the nails and wherever you find them. So I'm thinking, what's, what's this guy up to? Because <laughs> he knew a lot more than I did about the bugs. So anyway, that's, uh, that was our first encounter. And then um, we became friends. And uh, during his time in medical school, we did a bit of sailing together. And uh, as he said, when, um, when, he, when he finished his training, Dr. Wallace and myself had opened the Hensel practice. We had that open for a couple of years, and we were running out of time because we had, uh, were trying to run two practices, one here and Dr. Wallace in Zurich. So we asked Peter if he, liked, if he was interested, and of course he was, and that started. So then, after a number of years of Peter and myself running uh, Hensel and Grand Bend, uh, we uh, were... Uh, we wanted to expand again, and uh, our patients, some of our patients, particularly Shirley, where's Shirley? Shirley's knees were sore from praying for a, a female doctor. Now this was, this was, uh, this was um, post Bob Ray days, so any doctor at all that you could find was, was uh, worth its weight in gold. But uh, Dr. Waters blew in from the west and she stayed, and uh, those prayers were answered, Shirley. Where's Shirley? Shirley and Raza. Oh, okay. So she was the one that was uh, asking about the female doctor. So um, I'd like to thank Peter and Debbie for uh, all their help and their, uh, the mold that they've made in the practice and how it's progressed into what it is today. They've been, they've been very, very influential in that. Um, 
the luck continued, as, as, as they, they started making nurse practitioners at that time, and we weren't too sure what they were all about, but we decided we'd uh, get into the milieu, and uh, certainly we got the best of the nurse practitioners. And I've worked with nurse practitioners in various parts of the world and various other places and in other situations, and we have the best. None of them compared to ours. You know, they have their they have they're independent and they're confident and they have got great knowledge and uh, they're easy. They're they're very uh, very very important in the practice. You know, so uh, the, we were lucky in that sense. Um, then um, I think maybe our luck ran out a bit. Doctor Hammond arrived. Uh, <laughs> He boasted a, a past life of uh, Chippendale and a drug rap. <laughs> now, uh, the drug rap, I can believe, because he brought lunch, right? The Chippendale, I'm not so sure, yeah. So anyway, a great doctor and a, a great colleague, an excellent colleague, and we're glad to have him. And then the two newer doctors, Dr. Um, Dr. Ian, Ian Turkstra and Dr. Craig McLean, they showed up rather uh, more recent, and again, two great doctors and two great colleagues. And I just like to let the, there. I kind of envy you guys because you're you're starting out and you're getting your feet wet. And I just, if if medicine changes in the next 50 years as it did when I when I graduated, you might as well. <laughs> what, what you're learning and practicing now will be in the old wives' tales list, you know, the way things are progressing. So it's uh, it's really very very fast moving. And believe you me, the stuff I learned in, in, in medical school doesn't exist anymore, most of it. So keep that in mind. Uh, also, I'd also like to thank the front staff that we have, the, the medical office assistants and um, the, uh, the, nurse, the nurses and the front staff. They, um, they are the ones that carry the practice, and everyone knows if you want to have a good, smooth medical practice, you need good office staff. And right from the days of Heather and Carol and all those, I've always had good uh, uh, medical staff, and they've always uh, uh, done things properly and made, made life easy for me. So it's great that we have a good group at the moment, and things are, things are very smooth. I'm one of those um, MOAs who have worked with me for 11 years. Let's call her Trish. Okay, she uh, she's looked after my patients, and actually some of the patients are, have asked me, "Well, when you leave, is Trish going to take over?" And I said, "Well, <laughs> she probably could, you know, because uh, they love her and they she's really good with them, and she's really you know." But she also gives me a bit of advice once in a while. <clears throat> and last Easter, we had some kind of a conflab about leaving something in one of the rooms, and of course she was right. I had, I had made the mistake. And she came up to me and she said, Dr. O'Connor, I think this year you should get your wife, Wendy, to let you hide your own Easter eggs. <laughs> and, uh, so I thought about that over Easter and said, maybe it's time to pick a retirement day. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, don't leave this on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss her humor on a daily basis, so, you know. So, um, uh, other than that, Grand Bend has been a good innings for me. And, um, the, uh, I've enjoyed working in Grand Bend. Obviously, I wouldn't have stayed so long if I didn't. But it's great to see the medical practice that I started back in 71, how it's transitioned into today with all the new people that have come on board and how it's done. And it's, I would never have thought that back then. I mean, you know, it was a practice. It was, you know, you were treating 60 or 80 patients a day and you were constantly going back and forth. Ask Dr. Wallace. He was doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, one of the best decisions I've made in my life was making Grand Bend my home and raising my family here. And um, uh, probably, probably, uh, I certainly will miss the practice. And um, uh, I certainly hope to call Grand Bend my home for the next many years to come. So, thank you all again. So. Um, wonderful words, Dr. O'Connor, and the icing on the cake is actually at the back of the room. So 
Dr. O'Connor and Wendy, if you would please move to the back and we'll get the sparklers going and you can start to enjoy the exciting new adventure and your new journey of life. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone for coming and please stick around and uh, enjoy the company and enjoy some of the uh, cake back there and uh, everyone travel safely home. Bye bye. Good night. It is a great privilege to address this beautiful, beautiful girl. Uh, she is doctor's, Dr. O'Connor's assistant. Yes. And for 11 years, according to your speech. Yeah, it's been at least 11 years, yeah. Trish, I love you. I know I do. You're, you're such a warm, beautiful personality. And you're, you're, you're just, I don't know, every patient that comes into your hands, really, you feel good. You know, you, make a, you know how to make a person feel good. And I know that you're going to miss one another. You have complimented each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy to work with. I've learned. Where's the future for you now? I'm going to continue carrying out everything I've learned with him, with the doctors here and the patients. And I'm still here with everyone. So you're going to stay with the medical center? Yeah. Hopefully you retire here too. That's probably the plan. <laughs> Trish, thank you for talking to us, and thank you for being everything that you are. Oh, thank you. All right. Dr. O'Connor, it has been a fantastic night, uh, night, your night, but I just wanted to say your colleagues, the community, your patients, everybody is in love with you because you've really earned everybody's trust, and uh, you worked hard for it, and it shows. Um, Where's the future for you now? What will you do now? Well, I'll take a little time out over the summer. I'm, my immediate plan is to watch the playoffs in the World Cup, okay. the tennis in Wimbledon and uh, the Tour de France. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, I have some friends coming to visit in August. And uh, probably in September, I'm, we're thinking of planning a trip to Iceland and on to Ireland and then back to Iceland again as a holiday. Going back home. Well, yeah, going back to Ireland, yes, yeah, to home, yeah. So, um, any family there yet? Oh, yes, yeah, I've got a sister there and uh, lots of nieces and nephews. Okay. Yeah, so it's always a good time to go back. I'm a foreigner in this land, too. And uh, I have come here in the year 1971. And same year, well, there we go. A man such as yourself who has, com who has committed his life to Canadians, to the community. You made this your home. And everybody in this Grand Bend and area, Exeter, South Huron Hospital, if you recall not that long ago, they were going to close us down. And But you remember the... Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Those are the days when you put the Dukes up and you really counted as a doctor. And I know Peter Englert, he as well. You guys were quite a team in fighting for your community, that that you believed in. A very professional man who has given his all, your life, to the community in such an intimate way that community owes you. We all owe you for, for what you have done. I know I tried to say in my little speech there, I didn't prepare a speech, but how does one match what you have done? I have no idea. I just hope that great many young doctors would pay attention to you and try and fit into your mold somehow and do that that you have done. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's a very good compliment. Uh, um, I, we do have residents that come up to our clinic and uh, medical students and certainly by mentoring them during their time here and being, you know, showing them what we do, hopefully that has uh, some impact in their decisions to come to small communities. A lot of the time it's not because, uh, but it's hard to track people to, to uh, rural communities and small towns. But I mean, you have to start early. I mean, really in high school and the bright kids that are going to go on to medicine, if they come from a rural community, you're more likely to get them back to a rural community. 
um, the city guys tend to drift back to the city, but some of them don't. I mean, some of the uh, physicians we have grew up in cities, you know, and uh, they came and liked the lifestyle here and got into, were able to practice. The one thing that a lot of doctors don't realize is that you can practice the same amount, the same medicine anywhere in the world, whether it's downtown New York or downtown Grand Bend, you're treating the patient. And that's, the, that's your, that's your uh, expertise, you know? So whether you're doing it in the jungle or whether you're doing it in uh, downtown London or Ontario or London, England, you're, do, you're still treating the patient. So it's, it's, it's what you want out of life, you know? And like I said in my speech, it was a good decision for me. And I was, uh, my family was raised here and uh, it was, uh, it was I've, I enjoyed it and I still enjoy living in Grand Band and I will continue to live on it, even though I like to go to the city and I like to go to New York and uh, other cities, but you know, um, I'll continue to be a small town lad, you know. Uh, this is home, this is definitely home. I want to thank you on behalf of a great many of your colleagues who knew I was going to be here tonight. They're wishing you well in your retirement and uh, Someday, they hope to follow you in, in retirement as well. I guess I do too. We all do. But all the best. So deserving and so, I don't know. I'm just going to say God bless and have a wonderful retirement, sir. You Thank deserve you it. Much. Thank you. All right. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Bye-bye.